Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. This is question number nine from Pure Mathematics 2, P2, International A Level, June 2019. This is the International A Level paper, P2. This is for the AS exam. And here we are asked to solve this equation or show that this equation, cosine theta minus one is equal to four sine theta tan theta, can be written in the form. 5 cosine squared theta minus cosine theta minus 4 equals 0. Now for these type of questions, there are two fundamental um, identities that you must know. And the first one of them is tan theta is the same thing as sine theta divided by cosine theta. And the second one, which is really important, is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So the tan of an angle will always give you the same value as a sine of that same angle divided by the cosine of that same angle. And when you take the sine of an angle and you square it and you add it to the cosine of that same angle squared, okay, you square the cosine of the angle, you're going to get equal, you, you know, they all add up to one. So if you, it's very important identities that you must be aware of and you're going to be having to use them again and again in P2 and even later on. So now, how are we going to change this into this form? Well, we can't really do anything with cosine theta and sine theta right now, but what we can do is we can say, okay, tan theta, we can change it in the form of sine theta over cosine theta. So sometimes in these questions, you can't see the whole road ahead of you, how you're going to get from there to there, but you just take one step at a time and you'll see that, you know, you'll, you'll be getting there as long as you're you know, trying to go on the right track. So the right tracks here would be saying, let's change tan theta into sine theta over cosine theta. That seems like the sensible thing to do. So you have cosine theta minus one equals four times sine theta times, now tan theta is sine theta divided by cosine theta. Okay, now over here we see there's no fraction. So let's multiply both sides of this equation by cosine theta. In which case, you're going to get on this side, cosine squared theta minus cosine theta. Okay, equals, and here you're going to have, because of course the cosine theta will cancel out, you're going to have four times sine squared theta. Now, if you compare this to what we have to get to, okay, which you should do on your route always, just to see what's going on, we can see that the sine squared theta is out of place here. It's all cosine squared thetas and cosine thetas. There's no sine theta or sine squared theta here. So we can use this identity and rearrange it and say, okay, sine squared theta must be the same as one minus cosine squared theta. So I can replace the sine squared theta with one minus cosine squared theta, and I'll have an equation without any sine squared thetas in it. So I'm gonna have four times one minus cosine squared theta. Now, if I expand that bracket and simplify, hopefully I should get what I need. So let's see. So you've got now cosine squared theta minus cosine theta equals four minus four cosine squared theta. Now, if we add four cosine squared thetas, four cosine squared thetas to both sides, you're gonna get five cosine squared theta and you've also already got minus cosine theta and if you subtract 4 from both sides you're going to get minus 4 and that leaves you with nothing on this side and this is exactly what we had to show. Now an important point here is when they ask you to show something become something else like this you have to be very clear in your steps. For example you can't just go from here to the answer or from here to the answer. You should you know, show the steps which lead you to the answer clearly and fully okay so don't try to skip steps when especially when they ask you to show something and what you've got to show is there written down you know you don't just skip lots of steps show the steps clearly okay so that's part um, a of question number nine now part b of question number nine now it tells us hence means using what we just found solve for x between 0 included up to 2 pi over 2 the equation cosine 2x minus 1 equals 4 sine 2x tan 2x. Now what you notice is this is what was we had on the other page. 
this and that are the same form except the theta has been replaced by 2x that's all okay so what we can do is we can then use what we've already done and we can just rewrite this in this form just replacing the theta with 2x so we can say that this is going to mean this means that you got 5 times cosine squared 2x minus cosine of 2x minus 4 equals 0 all right we want to solve this this is like a quadratic equation in cosine 2x so what we can do is if you want to make life easy say y equals cosine of 2x okay in this case we'll say 5y squared minus y minus 4 equals 0 okay and we can solve this equation quadratic equation by factorizing I have a 5y squared and a minus 4 they multiply the product is 20 y squared let me just move this up a bit 20 y squared and their sum is 20 is minus 1 y so two numbers multiply to give you minus 20 and add to give you minus y they have different signs well, it's 5y five, it's five and 4y, and the 5y must be the negative. It's minus 5y and plus 4y. So now let's take out the common factor. From these two, it's y. From these two, it's 5y. y times plus 4 is 4y, and 5y times minus 1 is minus 5y. So that gives us our answer. So you're going to have a 5y plus 4 times y minus 1 equals 0. Let's just make sure 5y squared minus 5y plus 4y minus 4. That's correct. So we're left with y equals minus 4 over 5 and y equals 1. So now we can say cosine of 2x equals minus 4 fifths and the cosine of 2x equals 1. Okay, now um, we were told to solve this for these limits. Let me just make sure there was an equal sign with one of them. Yes. Okay. Now we're, we're going to deal with two x's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this, multiply every part of this inequality by two. And I'm left with um, zero to pi. I need to catch all the angles from zero to pi and then adjust my answer. So now let's solve the first one. Now, because it's mentioning a pi here, our answer should be in radians. Okay, so let's find the first angle using our calculator. Let's make sure that we're in radian mode. Angle unit. That's in radian mode now. So we're going to have shift cosine of 4 over 5. Minus 4 over 5, sorry. four-fifths minus four-fifths now the first angle I get is 2.498 2.498 they want us to give the answers to oops, what have I done there? they want us to give the answers to two decimal places so we should round it to more than two decimal places in our working so 2.4981 I'll just write that 2.4981 2. 2.4981 dot 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 that's the first angle we get now we need to find the angles up to pi okay so pi is up to this is 3.142 okay now for the cosine curve um, to find the angles that we need we have the first angle the calculator gives and the second angle is 360 minus this so if I take 2 pi and subtract this answer, let me store this as a, so it's stored in this exact form. If I do 2 times pi, 2 pi minus a, that gives me 3.785. Now that's more than 3.142, so that's out of the range. Okay, so this is the only answer in our range for this particular angle here. Okay. That's the only answer in our range for this angle here because as you see the cosine the cosine curve looks something like this 
and it's equal to minus four fifths over here. All right, so this is zero and this is pi and this is two pi. So the other angle is out of our range. Okay, so that's not the final solution yet. I'm going to write the final solutions at the end in terms of just x, this is two x. And for cosine of two x equals one, okay, you can, you can do this by thinking about the curve. That's one way of doing it. The cosine curve goes like this. And it's equal to one between zero and pi, only at one place when the angle is zero, zero radius. Okay, and you can see that from the calculator if you want to. You say inverse cosine of one gives you zero. And the other time it equals one is at two pi, which is outside of our range. Okay, so that's the only solution in this range. So here we can say that x is, oops, here we can say that x is equal to this divided by two. Okay, and that was this answer divided by 2, which gives us 1.249, 1 1.249, and x equals 0. And we can include the 0 because this says less than or equal to 0. Okay, so they want our answers to two decimal places. So you should say x is equal to zero and 1.25 radians. And there we have the answer to question number nine.